automate it. So let's take a look at what that looks like. Uh, for those of you that are new to the stream or watching the video for the first time, we are following along with the outline that we put together here. GitHub.com slash Jake slash contacts. Uh, if you follow along on the outline, it kind of walks through everything we've done. High level walkthrough. You can click on the links for any one of the videos. Here we kind of walk through the IDEs, went through Visual Studio, Visual Studio Code, JetBrains Writer. And then we started out basically with File New. We wanted to start the brand new application absolutely nothing we built out the models we built out what's called the management layer business layer service layer depending on it then we tied it into a sql database in this case we use my or sorry sql light mostly because i'm on a mac and it made it easier to do it and you can see some of the links here for blog posts that we use to kind of kick us off with it or uh, pages that I reference to forget like uh, I always forget the right SQL strings which we're gonna probably end up using today so I'm gonna open up this bad boy because we're gonna change a connection string today and I want to make sure we get the formatting right uh, we then went and introduced unit tests to the works and then we mocked out some of them and again at any point if you want to follow along or to watch an individual stream you can take a look at the videos they're on each post here as well as the relevant source code for that particular session we then went into building out a database layer so we swapped out the domain objects for a second set of database objects so that we can switch our primary database which we ended up doing as we go to azure if you're in monday's thing or watch this previous video you would have seen that we pushed the sql server database out to azure and our application was a simple change and we can honestly go back and forth now between either of them relatively painlessly we then spent a couple of weeks exposing an API, putting together some documentation behind the API. Spent a couple of days walking through API authentication, making our methods asynchronous, and spent a good two weeks on our first user interface, mostly because um, I wanted to explain a lot of it. Not that it normally takes that long, but when you're doing it in hour chunks, kind of happens we then uh, walk through the migrating sql it was two-part video mostly because i didn't have any tools and a lot of it was remembering the right sql commands but if you get a product like a Redgate uh, sql copy you can do that in a matter of a couple of clicks now we spent monday kind of migrating it to the cloud and that's where we are I don't have any IDEs open yet because I don't think we're going to need any of them right now. Uh, but I will get Rider working in the background because we are at some point going to need it when we push the code. So let's start going to Azure. And you can post it with pretty much any cloud or internally i'm just using azure so that everyone else can do it there's nothing stopping me theoretically outside of probably cost right now is to use aws or if i had my own hosted servers uh, at one point i'll probably sign up for an aws account and you know just to show that the code i'm doing is not you know the hosting environment really doesn't matter as much they're very similar outside of cost and what they call each certain things. Like in Amazon, they're called S3 buckets, whereas in Azure, they're called storage blobs. So it just really depends. Uh, so where are I? Mm, I hit the refresh key. Sorry, my hands are on the keyboard. Uh, 
database. That was the last thing we worked on. We created a database that we're able to connect to. We validated the data is there. The next thing we're going to want to do is actually, I think we just want to publish the code. If I left it off Tuesday, we were trying to create a user that was specific to this database. And I actually really decided probably don't want to do that. One is because you don't want user ID passwords. It's just easier within Azure to say, allow this service to have access to this resource, which is what we're going to do. So where's my writer? There we go. Let's open up contacts. Well, that's loading. Let's get the Azure Data Studio up. Make sure it's running. I think the connection is running. I did some cleanup work with it, mostly on my organizational skills. Let's see, that should work. Don't save. Don't save, don't save. Now that this is connected, I should be able to just do a new query from here. And now I don't want to install an update. Select star from ebo.contacts and I should have the five or so that are in there. There we go, four of them. So database exists, we're able to connect. Now let's publish the code. So what we started messing around with was building out a new user in there, which is what we really don't want to do. Locally, it's fine only because I'm using a Mac and the window, the username and password is required. I can't do like machine level authorization for at least I haven't figured out how so we are going to push some code with that so easy way to do it was right click here and choose publish and then where do we want to publish to we are going to publish to Azure right now and there's already a published profile for it, which I must have missed. So let's cancel that. I forgot we created one. So we're so we created three of them. Let's go take a look at that. And I'm going to edit that profile. Let's delete these other ones. I guess we were playing around with a couple other things on Tuesday. So here it wants to know where to send it to. These are my resources. This is the API. We are going to push it here. We have the option of enabling a database connection string. Unfortunately, with this, it just works with user ID password. I could do this and then give it the connection string, which is context database SQL server. Contacts, database, SQL server. Ooh, space bar is going crazy. I put a bandaid on my thumb, so now my hitting my space bar too much. I'm just going to put in a dummy password just to have it pushed, and then we're going to go make the change on there. So I'm going to click OK, and that saved it, and the really weird thing is I don't understand why I'll have to talk to guys at JetBrains why I actually hit play. You know, when I hit publish here, it should do it, but it treats it as a separate run configuration. So I am going to run that, which essentially says deploy it. Let's go and do that. It's creating, as you can see, the zip file. It stopped the web app, and now it should be publishing it to there. Once this is done, see it. Got the database connection string. Change it. I'm going to check to see what it looked at, but we see here 
that it's done. So let's go take a look at what that looks like. Uh, I'm on the portal now. Let's go back home. And it's not my recent. I've been doing a lot of work on my Azure subscription lately. So I'm just going to type it in here. Uh, contacts web. And it should be contacts API, which is this one. You see there are some data in and data out. We were able to do it. I didn't turn on App Insights. We'll probably do that in a future post. Uh, I'm gonna look at configuration. This allows you to override any settings. As you see at the very bottom, we have our contact SQL. If I hit, click to show hidden values, it's gonna give me a list. Let's click on edit to see what it actually says. So it's telling us, uh, this is the data source we wanna use, coding with GOG contacts, database, blah, blah, blah. Initial catalog this, user ID, with a bunch of other stuff. I'm not gonna go in there, it's using the behind the scenes ID. If we have everything right, we should be able to connect to it right now. So let's try this out. I'm gonna open up Postman. And make sure that it works. So Postman has this cool little feature called environments and by default it has none. I am going to create a new environment that allows us to change the server. So I'm gonna do Azure and create a variable and everything wants updates today create and then call it URL and then our initial our initial value should be I don't want you working where's this here and this would allow us to change it and I want to add one more local and then do URL and this should be HTTP local host 5001 click add now within here, where's our get contact? Here we can change the environment. So here's the part we want to change. This we are going to call local. So I think I have to just do this because that's the variable we created. And then if we change it to local, when it goes and calls, oh, that wasn't it. What's the format? I forgot the format. Uh, Postman environment variables. Might be two uh, curly braces, or it could be square, who knows. Uh, yeah, it looks like it's double. My bad. So if I do this, there it goes. Now if I hit send, I get the connection refused because I don't have the subject. So if I change this to Azure, I hit send. It's going out. Theory, it should fail because I didn't update my token. 
I'm getting an internal server error right now. But let's update. Let's get my cookies right and my authentication right. So let's do a get new access token. And I believe that's all right. Request a new one. One of the things I struggle with is, you know, when you're blogging and typing, you, or at least when streaming, kind of want to speak out loud and the tendency is like i want to literally say out loud what i'm typing in all the time but in that particular case typing in my password and i don't want to speak that out loud well, where's the authentication part i'm looking at my phone because i set up uh, two-factor authentication with my hotmail and as well as other things so it's prompting me for it let's hit send see what I get back I got back a internal error which is okay oh I might have to do I don't think I set up the actual HTTP part I did there I do it in here too. Yep. Forward slash. So I think it's correct. So the URL should be right. So it's saying error 500 error, which means the authentication is not working. Let's see if the app actually started up. Another way is I can just come here and see what I get if I get the 500 message. Yeah, it's not working, which is okay. Probably have a database connection string wrong or something behind the scenes. This happens a lot. That's why I did it this way as opposed to publication scripts right now to see what's happening. Startup, web update, web update. Stop web application eight minutes ago. When did we stop? Why did we stop? Let's see our logs. There you go, logs. Nope, that's not it. the application actually stopped let's try restarting it and see what happens didn't come back with a 500 right away there it goes That's not what I wanted. There's supposed to be an easy way to figure out. Let's check the code. Kudo tools in C. Don't want to do it that way. That's not it. IS is running. 
What is it? What is it? I want the dashboard. Let's close this. See if I can see anything from long stream. You can turn them on using the app service log setting. Let's go to our properties and turn it on. On the core platform integrated. Uh, don't want FT. Oh, I might need FTPs on. WebSockets, Affinity, debugging. Now I could remote debug and see what's wrong, but. Don't want to do that. So connection strings are there. Where are you? Application logging. Do warning error higher, detailed error messages, fail trace logs for now. Hit save. We'll turn all these off once we figure out why it's not starting up. And I think I might have to restart the app. Let's just restart it to make sure. Yes. And that's restarted. Let's refresh this. I might have to do this. Nope. Let's go take a look at the logs and see what we are missing. Okay, let's hit refresh. Get the 500, whoa, there it goes. Internal server error, internal server error. Ah, that's a lot of errors and nothing to help with what is wrong. Mm. Didn't have any logs. Nice. What is wrong? Why are you not working? What if I have to grant access to the database? I wonder if that's causing the problem. There's nothing there. Let's try to go in the database and grant access to it. Uh, where are you? Not there. 
advanced data, and now we'll configure. Nope. Nope, nope, nope. That firewall connect with, yeah, none of those things should matter. Where are you? Where are you? Where are you? And it's just the database strings. But there was a way I could do it right from here. Maybe it's at this server level. No, it's not what I want. Access control. Add role assignment. Select the role. Contributor. Save. And then we want another thing. Manage everything with access, last year view or anything. DB can view, let you manage SQL databases, but not access them, so you can't manage your security related policies. Pretty sure that's not what I want. System assign app service. Contacts. Oh, what I call it? C. C W. J G. Mm -hmm. C W J G. C W J G. Nope. Doesn't see it. So what else do we need to do inside the databases, inside here? <sighs> no, all else fails to go here. SQL Azure connection from app service. Access data would manage the identity. Build an ASP.NET app in Azure with SQL database. Build an ASP.NET Core and SQL database app in Azure. That's all we want. Did that. Yeah, that's all the starting of the app. Create the database. That's already done. It should be done. In your local repository, yeah, did that. Run the database migrations. Oh, should have found that before. Deploying, create the app plan, already have that. Create the web app, already did that. Configure the connection string. And that was done. Easy. What does the connection string look like?
It's building it for us, but not showing me what it is. I don't like that. And it's for you can use the name connection string using the standard pattern. I mean, I think it's right. I'm going to go double check it on different screen. Let's go to configuration. Edit, copy. Ha! Now I know why I felt, because it literally copied out the old uh, user ID and password, which is why it broke. Uh, so I typed in a bogus password of one, two, three, which is why it fell, as I was going to change it. So let me go and do that here. Uh, I'm going to open up a new tab so that I don't keep switching back and forth uh, between them. Sorry, my desk chair just started getting very uncomfortable start sweating a lot when I can't figure out the problems and now the chair just becomes awkward like this conversation now uh, okie dokie so go to databases click on the database and there should be connection strings and copy that and then uh, take this, edit this, and I am taking this off screen because there's a password in there that I don't want anyone to see. So bear with me for a second and type in my password. I think this was the password I created. So it's done. And it's back. Now let's go back and restart. Save this. If I save this, it should restart the application. Hope I really didn't spend 40 minutes because I had a bad password. Still got a 500. Uh, ba -ba -da -ba -ba -ba. Context database people. So let's take a look at the Configuration. Oh, hmm. I wonder if I have to change the authentication here now because before is that local host. I wonder if I have to change that now because we have the authentication turned on and it doesn't know what to do with it let's go and double check that so what are our resources and da, 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 da. i don't remember what we called it let's just do something context at least that will narrow it down Um, I guess not. Oh, it's in a different directory. I think it's in this directory. Ah, man, it would kill
we have to look at the app we created and uh, app registrations. I remember if I create it in here, if I create it in my regular one. Yeah, he created it in here. App registration. I don't know if there's anything I have to change here for it. Branding shouldn't matter. Oh, maybe I need to go back to regular this one and get the app domain for it. App registrations. I don't know. I guess it was in the other. Why wasn't I able to see it though? Hmm, API, endpoints, those should all be fine. Uh, expose. The yeah, app owners. I don't know why I couldn't see that. Just double checking to see if there's anything I have to change to point at the new URL, which I thought there was. Branding. Oh, I know what it is. It's here. No, it shouldn't matter. No, it shouldn't matter. We do have to change this, though, when we get to the regular one this has to be updated with the new URL and apparently that user doesn't have rights to it Why can I see it? I am the admin of it. Oh, I need to switch directory and not switch person. That's why. My bad. So let's go here. Now, if I view app registrations, I am with the user the other place I was logged in as fake user. So here, not that, nothing changes there. Nothing changes here. Nothing changes there. Nothing changes there. And that should be good. Okay. So these are good. Switch directory to go back to my default directory. And let's double check the API, see if there's additional logging. Missing something, it's probably something so small. Something so small that I can't see it. Uh, where'd my logging go? Logs, logs, logs. Connecting. Let's 
hit a refresh. Dies almost instantly, which means that there's something wrong with it. I want to see. Can choose. Request is mapped to a handler. Oh. The request is mapped to manage handler, but .NET extensibility feature is not installed. Oh, I got something wrong with the configuration. Let's see what we have wrong. Configuration. General settings. .NET Core is right. Pipeline integrated should be right. That doesn't matter. Let's try that. I don't think that matters. That shouldn't matter. Shouldn't matter. All that else is right. Save. Authorization. App service authorization. Action to take when request is not authenticated. I, oof. That's a lot of work. I have to look to see what we have to do with that. I don't think we actually have to do anything with that because the library handles all that for us. I'm going to skip that right now. Identity, yeah, it shouldn't matter. I don't even think it's actually getting that far. It's something else in the code. Yeah, there's nothing there. Should be nothing here. Ah, uh, but it's broken with you. Uh, make me pull out the Stitch Voice. I don't like when Stitch Voice comes out. Oh, we're in Contact Web. Oh yeah, that's the app server, so that should be fine. I don't know why I was in there. I don't need any of those. That's if we're pulling directly. We're not deploying it. Do I have any other settings in the app that I forgot to copy? There should only be one setting. Oh, no, that should be there too. That's part of the main. Oh, no, it's not. Ah, you should be up here. Same thing with you. This is not here, so this is going to fail. It's not reading anything from there. So let's put that here. Since we're using the same settings, we'll keep them both. And here we want to Copy that here and create a separate one. Uh, this one will just leave blank because I don't care about it when we're in prod. And this one we are going to override anyway. So let's redeploy that. For those of you watching, tomorrow at 9.20, I believe it is, Eastern Time, I'll be on the .NET Foundation stream uh, since I am running for the board of, running for a position of the board of directors for the .NET Foundation. So you can hear a lot about why I'm running and the reasons why you should vote for me on there tomorrow at 9.15 Eastern. Or sorry, not 9.15 Eastern, 12.15 Eastern. 
and the app is push so let's go here and kind of refresh this see if this changed yeah I think it changed I'm going to pull it off screen again change uh, I cars right Everything else is right, so let's hit save and try it again. There's my log. I have it looking at the other screen because they updated the passwords. I refresh this and I'll bring this back down. Let's see. Aha! Now we're getting somewhere. Now we get a 401. So it's working now. So this error should say 401. So the problem was I didn't have the Azure section in there. Now with Postman, if I get a new access token, just in case it expired, use token. Now, fingers crossed, hit send, and I should, this should get a 200 and a result. So let's go, hit send. It's taking longer. It might be working. Ah, it didn't work. But it came back with a longer 500. So let's make sure I got the authorization client right. Let's make sure all the access tokens are right. Delete, delete, delete. Make sure we're using that one. Send. Came back quickly with the 500 which is fine. Uh, authorization, all that is right. Let's just make sure the token connections are correct. So client ID 121, I think that was right. Let's open this up in a new tab to keep the database stuff open. Yes. I don't know why I get Star Wars theme stuck in my head already. Let's see what it says. Do, 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 do. App registrations. Postman client one two one four one two one four and the client secret should be right. So I'm in the right one. Bust the token. Use this token and make sure I got the URL right. Looks like it's right. Oh, it should be right. I should be going to... Oh, I could enable the console. 
see what we get back. Is that what I wanted? Uh, that's not what I wanted. There's a console I had in here last time. Where'd it go? Where is my console? Come on. Remember, it was like a hidden button on the side. Import runner. No. No. I don't want to upgrade right now. Nope, don't want to go there. What did I get you before? Body, nothing. Headers, fine. I want settings. There's no parameters. That's to generate code. Oh, here it is. Down here. This will tell us a little bit more about what happened. So, this is the last one here. Cross site, blah, blah, blah. Postman OAuth claim callback. There's a ring. Well, let's see what Azure is saying. Uh, let's run another one because this one is clear it it send came back now let's see page cannot be displayed internal error no module handles it That's a different message than before. That means we're getting a 500. So, as opposed to the 401, where if we run it here directly, we're getting a 401, and this should tell us that we don't have access to the resource. So what am I doing differently in Postman? Let's just copy out this URL. Oh. Interesting. I guess the HTTPS is not working on it. Double check and make sure I'm not on my work network. Let's change that to that. Send. I may not get a 400. Full API. Let's see if I do it by itself. I get anything. I get a 404 with that at least. Contacts. That's where I get the 500. So it's authenticated, but now it's physically failing. And why are you physically failing?
Running it out of 500. Let's see what the 500 says here. ISS is enabled to access the web config for the application. Oh, so it's missing something. Something didn't upload right. Let's check, see if I got all the files in the right place. Full disclosure, it's my first time pushing with Rider, so I didn't run through any trial runs, so there might be something missing. So here I got the app settings and app JSON. I'm gonna move that off screen because there's passwords in there for now. And I'll take a quick look at it. Ah, app settings are wrong. Let me go and change that. Uh, so what do we have here? This is supposed to get overridden. So this here, contacts, database, SQL server, should override what's in the app config. Oh crap. And edit that part out now. But I am going to paste it into the new one. And restart it. This doesn't work. I don't know what else to try. Whatever settings I had in that configuration should override. What's in here? So let's go try it in Postman again. I was thinking it was better because it took longer. That being said, I honestly don't know why it's broken. Should have been working. Uh, see if there's anything else in the logs. Now, last thing we can do is change this to comment out this and see what the developer exception page is, which tells us more of the problem. So let's push this up. And we'll try it again. Done. App should restart. Let's hit play here and see if it works. Oh, 
Got a 500. So there's the problem. SQL cannot open up the database connection. So it got the right database connection, but the firewall rules blocked it from happening. So let's go to our database and turn it on. So annoying. I mean, I get why it's there, but it's so annoying. We have to give it access to it. Set firewall, deny public network access, allow Azure services and resources to access this. So this is what you want to do. Click yes right there. Hit save. It says it updated it. Let's click OK. And let's retry this bad boy. Now I get a login failed. Great. So now I have the permissions to it and the login is not working, which is awesome. So I can go and fix that. So let me move that off to a different screen. Be right back up these messages and make sure that's working. And do, 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 do. why is my face so red? Okay, I'm just gonna keep that screen open on a different screen since it's happened more than once. Hopefully it won't happen again. Uh, the app restarted. So let's hit send. This one's gonna take a little bit longer because the app had to restart. It usually takes 30 seconds or less. Yay, it worked. Got it working. So now we got the API up there. The API working, had to open up firewalls, get the connection strings right, but got it working. I feel like that was an accomplishment for today. And maybe later tonight or tomorrow, we will connect the uh, web UI app to it. Apologize for any of the problems. It was the first time pushing it, but at least we know we got it working. Now let's just do one more thing before we go. Let's get this part to work. Make sure that that's working good. If I switch the environment to local, should fail. Yeah, okay, good. Sweet. So, sorry about that. We'll get the web UI part published tomorrow, or maybe later on. Eh, the hell, we got time. Let's do it now and knock it out. So, this one might need, actually, this one might need a little bit more work. So, I might do it another time. Or we got 45 minutes. Ah, the hell. I'm going nowhere. I took off for the next four days of work, so let's do it. Nah, we're well, not going to do it. Thank you for joining. Uh, reach out to me on any of the social media that you see on this screen. It was great chatting with you. Sorry for the delays. I'll catch up with you on the next stream.